Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video we are going to take a look at how to implement the RVT blending with the Megascan assets. So if you are new to runtime virtual texturing, if you haven't tried it before, or if you just stumble up into this video, please watch my video on RVT Explain, the ultimate beginner's guide for runtime virtual texturing. It's going to be in a comment pane down below. Watch that video before you watch this one. It's really going to help you to understand. And there's a lot of concepts that I'm going to gloss over here just for the sake of time. Okay, now that you watched that other video, let's get started. All right, for the sake of time, I already have a landscape and I have my asset here. That's going to be my example. Now let's just jump into creating a material. Right click. Landscape Mega Scan Master. You're going to see why I'm using Master in a second. Now, in here, we're going to do exactly the same thing that we did last time with the basic tutorial. So, we're going to turn this into a material attribute. We're also going to bring in a runtime texture output and we're going to put it here. Now we need our mega scan asset. For that, I'm actually going to go here into mega scans. I mean, minimize this surfaces, and I'm going to use stony ground, and I'm going to double click this material. If you haven't watched any of my other videos, the mega scan assets when they come into Unreal when you import them, these are instances. This is not the main material, so you cannot play with the notes. So what I'm going to go is down here you'll find the parent and you just hit this magnifying glass it's going to take you to its location we're actually going to close this and we're going to open the master now that we have opened the master all we have to do is copy absolutely everything that we have on screen Control c and we're going to copy that over now when you copy that over into your new master material you're going to see that you lose all the connections that is because this node right here it's not going to carry over this is uh, something that is sensitive to its own material. So that's not going to come with the copy and paste. doesn't matter. We're here to plug that in together. Now, what I'm going to do is go here and delete this because this is a comment. And we're going to start plugging things up. So the first thing is we need to set our materials. So set material attributes. Click here. And we're going to do one, two, three, and four. Base color, I'm not going to do metallic because A, this landscape doesn't have any metallic and B, you're going to see that there is no metallic here. So I'm not going to use that. Now over here, I'm actually going to switch metallic with roughness and roughness with normals. Now that we have that, I'm just going to start plugging this into where it belongs. So base color, specular, roughness and our normals now you're gonna see what about displacement what about that beautiful displacement i'm not going to plug this in because as you can see there's nowhere to put that at the recording of this video i do not know of any way i read the documentation and i don't see any way to use this particular technique with displacement that being said I remember in one of the Quixel videos that they did when they were actually demonstrating the blending techniques, they said that in the future there is going to be displacement available for this technique. That is actually another blending technique that does allow for displacement, but it is very heavy. And I, if I remember correctly, one of the guys said that it's just not worth it because how resource intensive that is. So I'm just going to not use this placement here. Now I'm going to do landscape layer blend just like it in the past to erase one for dirt and one for, I uh, guess we can do, let's just call it snow. Right. We're going to plug this in here. And for the second one, we're going to do a copy and paste of this. We're going to be doing a three color vector. Plug it into the base color. We're going to look for a white ish material. 
uh, color. I'm going to do a constant one for my roughness of 0 0.9, a also constant one for my specular. And for my normals, I just brought in a snowy normal that I had uh, imported here from a mega scan snow material. So I'm just going to plug that in here, plug that in here as well. And from this, we're going to get materials. So right click, get material attributes. Click here. I'm going to do one, two, three, four roughness and normals. Now we're going to plug this in here. We're going to plug this one over here. And we're going to start plugging all of these. So base color, roughness, specular, normal. So we got a word position note with a mask component where we're going to be masking the Z axis, which means the blue channel. And we're going to throw this into world height. And just for the sake of it, I'm going to do an opacity mask of one. All right, that is it for our master material. I'm going to apply this and we're going to be adding it to our landscape, but not yet. We need to create an instance. That's why we made this master. So right click, create an instance. And this is actually what we're going to be using with our landscape. But before we throw that in there, we need to change the texture. So as you can see, what we did is we used the MegaScan setup. So it allows us to choose our textures here instead of going into all that uh, node configuration. And we can just do as many instances as we need. We're going to do the same with our asset. This is just a really easy way uh, to add your textures into your materials without having to do that process all over again. So I'm just going to turn these on. I'm also going to turn on tiling because we're going to use that. And I'm just going to start adding the textures for this. Let me just reduce this a little bit. And we're going to do albedo over here, normal maps over here and roughness over here. Excellent. We save this and we're going to throw it into the landscape. But before we do anything with the landscape, remember the landscape has to have a virtual texture over here. So we're going to hit plus and we're going to throw in uh, this asset that we have right here. This is going to be my color. Before we actually add this, let me just bring the runtime virtual texture volumes. So one is going to be color. So throw it in here, pick with your color picker or your eyedropper tool, copy rotation, copy bounce. And you're going to see that the volume is encompassing our whole map. I'm actually going to go here and give it a name. RVT underscore color. I'm going to place another one of these. And I'm going to make sure that the height is in here and I'm going to call it RVT underscore height. All right. Just remember that for the height that we apply, we're using world height and for the color on our runtime virtual texturing, we're using this one over here. Okay. Now remember to always pick. Copy rotations, copy bounds. And now we can add our landscape material. Okay, you're gonna see how this turns black. Go to landscape and we need to go to paint. And we need to assign a layer to this. So I'm gonna click here, weighted blender layer. Click OK or save it if you have a particular folder where you want to save this. Give it a second to compile and there it is. Um, you can add a layer for the second one if you wish to. Let's do that. I'm actually going to get out of this mode. I'm not going to be painting anything over here. 
Now you're gonna see that this is uh, really tiled and it's looking really bad. So I'm just gonna go into my instance and I'm going to go to tiling and I'm going to do like 0 0.2. That looks a lot better. So I'm gonna leave it at 0 0.2. You can change this to uh, whatever you need to. Now after that, it's time to create our mesh RBT material. All right, so I just did right click and I'm going to create a mesh mega scan master. And this is going to be our master material. We're going to do exactly the same that we did with the landscape. That way, if we have tons of assets, we can just use tons of instances and not repeat this process all over again, like I've said it before. For that, I'm actually going to go into the material of this one. And I'm going to go to its master. Double click and make sure I copy absolutely everything, same as I did before. Control C and we're going to go back to the material we just created and we're going to paste it in here. For the sake of saving time, what I did is I brought in all the nodes that are in the bottom. This, uh, just really quickly to go over what this does, what we're doing in here is this is the mix of the height. We are masking the height and we are telling it how we going to apply it into our asset to blend it. And in here are our two scalar parameters that we did on the simplified video. And we're going to play with these once we have our material finished. But before that, let's get started with this. Let's just bring a runtime virtual texture sample. We're actually going to need two of these. So control C and control V. One is going to be down here and it's going to be using the world height plugged into this subtract B. And the other one is where uh, it gets uh, really not complex. It's just, it looks like spaghetti. You're going to see what's going on in a second. So we're going to be using a bunch of lerps. Uh, let me bring in one lerp over here. So hold the letter L and click. That'll bring on a lerp note. So what a lerp note does is it, it's going to grab A and B and mix them. And alpha is what's going to dictate how the mix is going to go. And for this, what we need to do is the runtime virtual texture sample goes into A. The texture over here goes into B. And our alpha is going to be determined by the runtime virtual texture height. So we're going to take alpha out of the saturate node. Now let's get started. From base color into A. From albedo into B. And I'm actually going to bring this saturate node a little bit higher and plug this into alpha. All right, so we have our albedo. Let me bring this closer. Actually going to bring this one closer as well. This one is going to go into our base color. All right, so let's do the other one. I know there's an error right here. There's going to be an error right here as well. Don't worry about that. We'll fix it in a second. Now I'm just going to bring three more lerps. So control C, V, one, two, and three. And we're going to be doing the same with specular. So specular goes here, specular from here, and the alpha from here. I'm gonna plug that in here as well. Let's do roughness. You notice I'm skipping metallic. If you have an asset that has metallic, what I would do is just plug it in here. So let's just do that. And we're going to do a plug in metallic here. This particular asset doesn't have metallic, but this way your metallic will come through. So just plug it in directly. Now let's go with roughness. So I'm going to plug this one into B, this one into alpha and bring the node up. 
So we can plug that roughness in here. There you go. And all that's left to do is the normal map. So we got our normal map here, here, and right around here. Now we're going to plug this into normal map. And all we have to do is uh, fix these errors that we're having. So for this one, I'm going to be adding the RVT that's called land test. This is the RVT that's going to be for the color. And you're going to see you saw that that error went away. For this one, we're going to be adding the land test height. That's going to determine the height of my terrain. And as you can see, my material started showing up very nicely. And we are done. I'm going to apply. So before we continue here, we need to add our RVT assets into the assets over here. So I already added the height. I forgot to add the color. Make sure you add your color here. And this is what's indicating that it works. So it's just capturing the whole terrain as let's say it's as a picture from top. So that is what's going to project into the asset and what's going to allow us to do the blending. The next thing we need to do is right click here, create an instance. And this instance, we are going to do the same thing that we did with our landscape. We're going to turn on all of these. And we're going to do the same. We're just going to add the albedo, the normal, and the roughness. All right, we don't need to mess with the tiling because this one has its own UVs, but we might mess with the tent. So we may have to change that a little bit. Okay, so we save that material instance. And now it's the moment of truth. We are going to throw this in here. As you can see, nothing happened. Uh, nothing happened because we have not set up our scalar parameters. I know that was a little bit anticlimactic, but that was the purpose of doing it is just to show you that until you um, mess with these parameters, you're not going to get anything out of this technique. So we're just going to start changing values and see what happens. So let me increase the height all the way. Okay. Uh, let's leave it up up to here. I think that's fine. And it's really sharp. So the blending is what's going to give us that uh, fall off. So it's not a complete seam. I'm just going to increase that to around there. I think there is fine. So let me just diminish this a little bit. Okay. Now what I need to do and what I want to do is actually change the tint of this material. I'm going to do 0 0.8 and we're going to change the tint to something that's a little bit more like what's underneath. I think that's a little bit better. Click OK. And we have our blended material. So if we actually bring it further down, you can see that our asset looks like it's coming out of the ground. So if I were to select the asset and add its old material, you're going to see that's a very clear seam around here. This is the same asset that I was using in the intro of the previous video. And if you throw it in here, you're going to see that it blends right in. It looks like it's part of this terrain. All right, that is it for this video. How to use the RBT blending with the mega scan assets. And again, this is just a basic way on how to do the blending. I'm still going to be showing an enhanced way of how to do this in a future video. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the like, leave a comment and share it around. It really helps the channel and I'll see you in the next video.